from Dublin to Cleveland production. Hello, everyone, and welcome to From Dublin to Cleveland. I am Logan Howard, still a little bit under the weather, but I am joined by supposedly the greatest, no, wait, the best, no, no, I think greatest works, the greatest driver of all time. If you listen to the last podcast, he is totally the greatest. He has spent so many years preparing himself to get this license, and he now has it. He's put in more work than you have. He's put in more work than your sister, Sherry, or your cousin, Janelle. He has put in more work. So I want everyone to stand up and give a loud round of applause for Brendan Thomas Merritt. So Brendan Thomas Merritt, best driver. Good job. Good job. I thought I was until I got up this morning and was about to go for a drive and saw scratches on it. And I was like, (laughs) I don't even remember hitting anyone or anything. I don't know where they came from. (laughs) But I've gotten away with it, so who cares? <laughs> little, did, little did we know, folks. It's his. It's all the women that are after him. They they are just so and sick and tired of him not, you know, appreciating them that they are now scratching up his car with their keys. Uh, so it, you know, it, they are going after him now. Country songs from America have now made it across the globe to Ireland, and those Irish girls are listening to him, and they are all after Brendan because he is not. He's not paying them attention. So they are scratching up his car. Scratches from a certain angle, I suppose they can look like love hearts. <laughs> I'm just thinking, okay, yeah, the uh, car repair man's going to love me, but who cares? Who actually cares? <laughs> <laughs> First time well, I crashed, like, I was in euros worth of damage. It was not that bad this time. Just a few little scratches. <laughs> Well, for today's podcast, we have uh, Brendan is going to share with us uh, why today is so special. Um, apparently, he just has another one of those banker holidays that isn't bank. Out- using banker. It's bank. <laughs> well, you know, he's not a banker. He does have the holiday, so. <laughs> So Brian's going to share with us what what this holiday means, and then we're going to talk some hot seat questions, then we'll get into God's Word. So, Brendan, take it away. What is so amazing about the bank holiday today? (laughs) Great question. Bank holidays are the best days. I think every month in Ireland should have at least one. Um, December should have, like, a (laughs) hundred. Nah, we're we're spoiled rot in December. I think we've got three. So... On the 1st of February, we're recording this on the 6th, I think it is. No, it's not. It's the 5th. Um, but on the 1st of February, Logan's holding up fingers, but I actually have my screen covered. And <laughs> as I'm raising his hand, I don't know how many fingers he had up. <laughs> it's like I've just come out of surgery. How many fingers are there? <laughs> so the 1st of February year is called St. Bridget's Day. And um, some say, Bridget, um, some say Bridget, some give the Irish name Breege. It's all the same woman. So she lived in the 400s AD. So she was a contemporary of St. Patrick's, actually. Um, and when it is St. Patrick's Day and running up to St. Patrick's Day, the country is covered from head to toe in shamrocks, um, three clove leaves. To represent the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In February, we get reeds and we make crosses. So they look like Celtic crosses out of the reeds. And very, very many houses have these. I was out canvassing for a politician today and uh, someone whose door I knocked on had one of these. And my house has had this hanging up for I have lost count of <laughs> how many years. Um, these crosses are just all over the place. So, um, the important thing about um, Bridget is that she was born in Foggart in Dundalk, County Loud. So in my county, about 25, 30 minutes down the road, uh, they're actually celebrating her at the moment. I was at a festival yesterday where they had um, big without her face appearing on projector screens, you know, she was moving, waving her crosses around. 
Um, and then she was also hanging from decorations all over the ceiling while you had um, massive tunnels and archways of lights. And then you had a light show every 30 minutes <laughs> of like rave music. So you had all these, like, you know, all the Irish, you know, doing their oots, 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 to like, you know, <laughs> this woman who died like 1,600 years ago. It was epic. We love our saints and our, we love our, our ancient world Christians, the class. So her father was named Dovacht. Uh, he was a pagan chieftain. And her mother was a Christian, but was his slave. So it's believed that he wanted um, Bridget to marry um, another pagan chieftain. Um, but she was like, yeah, sorry, Pops, that's not happening. So um, he actually kicked them both out. Uh, but now she did later re- return to her father's house and, and when she got older. Um, but being a Christian and raised by a, a Christian mother, um, she absolutely loved people um the miraculous was very evident in her lives you can have uh, many accounts of loaves and fishes type miracles surrounding her uh, like multiple patients of bread and the likes um we remember her also for having a healing gift just you know like the apostle paul had and, and the 12 apostles um there was great faith um especially in the earliest years of Christianity coming to Ireland, especially when it's spoken in, in Gaelga, in the Irish language. Um, a guy called Palladius had come before St. Patrick. Um, God love him. He was doing the Lord's work. Um, but he didn't speak the language. So the degree to which Christianity had been particularly effective was limited, but stifled on cultural lines. Whereas St. Patrick actually knew the Irish language and Reed or Bridges was native born Irish. So of course, easier then to relay um, your, your thoughts, opinions, revelations and theology to people who speak the same language as you. Um, so yeah, there are many accounts also of people getting um, healed miraculously um, wherever she went. And uh, on one occasion, and there was an elderly gentleman and she wanted to teach him about the cross of Jesus and the power of the cross for salvation and healing. So she got some reeds together and uh, made a cross. So now when we make these, 1600 years later, uh, it remembers um, the crucifixion, uh, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus and everything that his sacrifice and resurrection have won for us. Um, so she dedicated her life to the Lord and she never got married. She chose just to, uh, be in quotation marks, <laughs> married to Christ, um, or the ancient world called it a virgin of Christ. Um, <clears throat> I just mean that she, she devoted herself to the cause of Christ rather than to, um, carnal pleasure. Um, so then she went to Kildare when she got older, which is where I studied at university for four years. And she wanted to build a monastery there. Ireland's full of monasteries. Um, they're basically um, buildings of stone where people would go and they could study the Bible. And a number of them also offered like social, what today would be classified social welfare. Um, looking after the sick, teaching communities how to read and write, looking after them. And many of these actually in the country became the ancient world's version of universities, attracting people from all over the ancient world, particularly continental Europe. So when Europe fell into the Dark Ages, Ireland preserved the gospel of one Jesus, Emmanuel Christ. Um, and we developed the nickname, the Island of Saints and Scholars. And in case anyone out there is like, you're not a scholar. You just said Jesus' nickname or middle name was Emmanuel. It was a joke, people. Relax the cags. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she wants to build one. And the king of that region in um, Kildare said, yeah. 
And she said, okay, I'll compromise. I'll take off my cloak. I'll put my cloak on the ground. And the area that my cloak covers, that'll be my monastery. And he said, yeah, just a little woman. That's okay. But um, again, um, tradition and tradition says, unless I'm God's miraculous God, so I see no reason why it can't be true. When she put her cloak on the ground, it extends it um, several dozens of meters. Uh, miraculously, and the king was like, Oh my goodness, I'm so surprised, but I must remain true to my word. And uh, yeah, that's where she built her monastery. So we do have a very, very beautiful ancient text called the Book of Kells. It's basically Ireland's version of the Bible. It is the single most beautiful, renowned, and world-famous medieval artifact there is to be found. Um, but it was preceded by the Book of Kildare, and may possibly have been the inspiration for it. Uh, the Book of Kildare has currently been lost to time. I'm sure it's somewhere underground, just waiting to be um, found and uh, put in a museum for tons of people to go to and inject finances into that area. Um, but currently it's been lost to time. But uh, people do believe it was the precursor to the Book of Kells. And it was created in her monastery. So yep, she was a mighty woman of God. She loved Jesus. And she loved people. So now we love her for the legacy. Um, for her sacrifice, for her faith. <laughs> and for giving us a bank holiday so I didn't have to work today. She's class. She's great. <laughs> well done. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Brendan, for sharing um, a little bit more about your country's past and also, you know, our own faith's past as well. Um, so thank you for sharing that today. Mm, we stand on All the right. shoulders of the Now on to the silly, ridiculous part of the podcast. So um, <laughs> first question for our hot seat. Um, if you could travel out out of the country right now, Wherever you where wherever you could go, there's the money is no issue, you know, exactly. time's no issue, work having work off is no issue. Where would you go right now outside of the country? Oh um on my birthday I actually got an email from Vodafone <laughs> and they were like, Hey, listen, happy birthday. We we're gonna send you anywhere you want to go and we're gonna pay for flights. And I was thinking, Any you really really want to go? No. Once you look at the blueprint, <laughs> anywhere you want to go out of a very short list in continental Europe. And I was thinking, Ugh, not in my top 10. Ugh, one to two, two years ago, didn't happen. Now I got no interest. <laughs> Paris. London. <laughs> Logan remembers me going on a month long rant about that. Yep. <laughs> we might have the time, guys. Uh, London, eh, been there. Um, do I think I will go to a revival conference there later this year? Very possibly, but you did specify right now. Suppose right there into your bedroom to actually see you in the flesh, poke you and make sure you're not just some artificial intelligence android creature of pixels that I've been wasting years on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you are. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say you knew you are because it sounds very tacky, but where you are specifically right now. <laughs> well, this could be awkward because he might go to where I am and I go to where he is, and then you just ships passing in the night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you never leave. Because <laughs> genuinely, I think the one place that I want to go out of anywhere um, is Ireland. That's on my list. That's on my plans of at some point in the next year to go visit uh go visit brendan of course got to make sure he's a very busy man that i don't uh you know go when he's in europe or something wild like that um but uh yes yeah, so that that is where i would go i would i would go to ireland um and anywhere else would just be secondary so um, i literally have an itinerary already written up i might have my yearly my yearly planner here actually dark. yeah and it's got things for when you do come now it only goes as far as like the last day of this year, so <laughs> might be obsolete in the bin if you don't. Um, but it's got all the things to do if and when I'm free. And like you said, 
I'm a hard guy to pin down. So even if I'm not physically present, all the things you can do without me. I've literally got it all written down. There you go. To like the, to like the hour. There you go. All right. Um, so, next question. If you moved to a place where you didn't know anyone, how would you go about meeting new people? I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I would probably go into like restaurants all by myself and just sit all by myself and smile politely at people and not talk to them and only talk to the waitress marginally about the menu. <laughs> and then, I don't know, may just pray that God would put the right people in my path if I go church hopping or checking out churches and or um, cultural amusements or attractions and uh, what's call it? Work. Presumably I would have to work wherever I go. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable on my own. I don't really, I'm okay talking to people in set spaces. Um, there are a couple of people in my world where I'll stretch. They cover a number of places in my life. Not often, but there are some, but in general, I'm very okay in my own company and I wouldn't leave out saying, God, I'm going inside to find a friend today. No, I just. Stay in my lane. God put the right people in my lap. Yeah. Uh, I would say that I am I am having to be more like Brendan than I probably want to be. Um, but because <laughs> being me is so terrible, you know. No, I'm just one of those people who would need friends but wouldn't necessarily do anything about it. Um, <laughs> which <laughs> like, oh, I really want them bad, but. Mm. So and that is okay. Be cool to see. <laughs> um, actually, I actually had this happen the other night. I got invited last night to go over to um, one of my coworkers' house because they were inviting people over, and mm. uh, I was supposed to go over like two hours earlier, but I fell asleep and didn't wake up in time. So they texted me and they're like, "Hey, we're having dinner now. Are you, do you want to come over?" And I'm sitting here thinking, and they're like, "Oh, by the way, we have people over," and I'm going. Do I go? Because there's pe other people there. If it was just the people I work with, that's one thing. But these are other people that I don't know. And I don't know whether they have, if they're older, if they're, if they're my age, if they have kids, if they don't have kids, if they brought some random single girl to meet me. I don't know that's what I'm walking into. So uh, I was like, all right, I need to make myself look somewhat decent so I don't look like a complete bum. So I'm not going to wear sweatpants. I'm going to wear actual pants for this because, you know, your, your sweatpants is not going to do it. Um, and I had to talk myself into actually doing it because I was there was there was a moment where I just went. I could just watch a movie and not go over there, though. Um, but I, I, I sucked it up. I went over there, had a good time. We played a game and had. I got to meet them. They have four little kids um, who are balls of energy. And one is extremely cute because he was just like, what's your name? <laughs> like, I'm Logan. He's like, hi, I'm Isaiah. You're pretty nice. <laughs> Such a sweet kid. Um, so uh, I would probably go to church. I'd probably Church is probably where I would go to look to find people. Um you know, everybody knows that you can get disappointed at church, um, but yeah. uh, I'd keep going to enough churches that eventually I'd find one that I'm like, oh, I can get along with these people. So, um, yeah. Do you find it hard to get along with other believers? <laughs> um, That's a I guess. guess. Uh, well... Define, it's like I won't really how you define believers. <laughs> oh, I was one of those Christians. Okay, I think we should actually take a poll someday. Out of the two of us, who would the audience rather be friends with? I think you'd win. <laughs> I don't. I've know. Long, I've long since believed I don't actually show my best qualities on this podcast. We're 170 episodes in. I actually don't think I presented myself in the slightest someone you would want to meet in real life. <laughs> I don't know though. I feel like the uh, 
the bad guy in you, it might be way more attractive than the Logan trying to be nice guy. Like they might be like, I'm fake. Like they'd be like, Logan's totally fake. But that that Brandon guy, he is as real as it gets. He is so he's so hardcore, and I just love I just love how he rags on the Democrats all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you should hear me going about Irish politicians. It's on another level, honestly. Oh, oh yeah. I, I can't wait for those episodes when you, <laughs> Brendan's running for political power. Like, hey, right now. Don't tempt me. I just might one of these days. Here's, here's Brendan with his uh, political rant of the day. And so Brendan will have a specific segment <laughs> every week where Brendan just goes on and goes off about something in, in Irish politics. And then I'll just be there and I'll be like, hmm. That was that was an opinion, and then all the people in the comments who are who listen to us from Ireland will be like, "Yes, tell it like it is," and all the Americans will be like, "What is this?" <laughs> it's like, what's a T shock? What's a Tallinnstein? Why does he not explain these Irish words? Are we supposed to know what these mean? <laughs> uh, the like literally has a vampire's name. It, it's properly ridiculous. We had an illegal immigrant like stab a woman in my profession in the neck eleven times, and our former president went on TV and blamed like Irish Christian men. Like that's the level of absolute deviance we've got oh, going man. here. Else. Yeah, and they knew who the murderer was, and they concealed uh, his identity for like two years. Oh boy. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. 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 There, there, there's an upcoming video. I can sense it. <laughs> All right, what is something, Brendan, that makes you extremely uncomfortable? I'm going to mention it. I'm not going to elaborate. You're just going to answer, jump in with your answer because it's just, it's vile. But when people share icky, agonizing, painful stories involving fingernails and toenails and the flesh underneath them. There, we're moving on. Oof, yeah. Don't think about it, don't respond, just talk because i'm gonna start picturing it i'm gonna just start shuddering and cringing over here yeah okay moving on um <clears throat> so i'm 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 just gonna say it the thing that makes me the most uncomfortable is brendan's uh <laughs> interpretation of kamala harris it's fine well we're gonna now spend the next two minutes listening to him do this and uh you're going to feel uncomfortable too but um, it's going to be great. <laughs> oh, my God. What, what do I have this time? Right, okay, I've, got a, I've got a fork. This is for my lunch tomorrow. Not that I'm going to eat the fork, but eat my lunch with the fork. Leftover dinner. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> this, children, is a fork. Forks are made out of a substance called metal because they were made by Mark Zuckerberg's Meta. And see, when you hold it like this, it looks like an L. Meta. Metal. And forks, they have one, two, three, four, five. No, hold on. One, two, three, four tines. That's why it's a fork. In Europe, fork is spelt F O U R K. <laughs> But in America, we don't like the letter U, so we spell it F O or K. <laughs> and stand her. <laughs> An abominable woman. Graceful. I just can't. I can't pack the level of incompetence and stupidity. Or the fact she's in action. <laughs> Just the <laughs> worst. He is the Joker from Batman. For those, for those of you, for those of you who have wa who have been privileged to watch <laughs> Michael Scott's Tots uh, episode of The Office, Amazing. that was worse, Amazing. folks. That was worse. Because <laughs> that's real life. She sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> the meme has usurped reality. We are living up an Opticon. Shameless plug for my book, I know, but we are. Uh, Your reality has been usurped by the image. It's it's properly ridiculous. 
living the moment. Oh, man. All right. Next question. Brendan, what was your favorite childhood TV show to watch growing up? Ooh. Do I have to give like a Christian answer or my real answer? You get the answer that is in your heart. Okay, I've got some grace and I'm going to use it. Um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Don't start sending us emails. But that show normalized lesbianism. That was only one part of it, people. Relax. But yeah, you do have to push the fast forward button from season four onwards. <laughs> but what I really, really like about it, because I watched it from the very beginning, um, is that people hear the word vampire and they think, supernatural i think fighting they hear slayer then you know warfare apocalypse um drama they hear buffy and they think yeah it's kind of funny to say buffy and i find the show had the right blend <clears throat> of drama um martial arts fighting action adventure fantasy and a little bit of horror to an extent but especially humor it was just a wonderful amalgamation of all those themes. Um, some ways the characters spoke, which is very, very quirky. Um, it kind of impacted actually the the social lexicon, how people began speaking. Like the word Google as a verb, <laughs> all Googleish, didn't exist until Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But the, the line was used in the show, and suddenly everyone was like, oh, is that is that what you do on, on Google? Is that what you do on the Google? Your Google? Uh, and just became part of the, the lexicon. And now millions of people say it every single day. Many times a day. Yeah. Um, the characters were great. Um, they're all so different. Um, so rich. Very, very well developed. Uh, it was a show that was very okay with killing characters off. Um, somewhere brought back, but always intelligently. Um, there was always a logic behind it. And I think to compare or just contrast it with the most movies and TV shows today, um, where you've kind of got, you know, the MCU, um, for instance, is that Buffy was just a teenage girl, and yes, she was supernaturally imbued with these special gifts of, of super strength. But there was one episode in which she lost her powers, and six feet tall vampires very almost killed her. Or she couldn't stand up, let's say, to um, male bullies in the school. Whereas when you watch TV shows today, the woman is the most powerful character in the show just because of her anatomy. Or with Buffy, if and when she made a mistake or did something she should not have been doing because she was too young or not married or too stupid or too hasty, there were always consequences. You watch Captain Marvel in the MCU, and it is totally fine that she spends half a movie hunting down the scrolls who are innocent and killing them and blowing up ships and yada yada yada. But she gets away with it scot free because she's a woman. If Buffy did one thing wrong, there were consequences. The show punished her for having stepped out of line. So there was always accountability in the show. The characters weren't allowed to be selfish or stupid and get away with it. There was always a comeuppance. Um, whereas in shows today, based on the colour of someone's skin or what they were or weren't born with or who they do and don't do and don't go to bed with, they'll be judged or they'll get away scot free. You didn't have that in Book Down Purse Slayer. Um good and evil were very clearly defined for the yeah. most part. Um, and also, as a karate kid. So I was watching this blonde chick absolutely beating the living daylights out of monsters. And I was thinking, oh, wow, yeah, you know, I, I could do that. Or, oh, I want to I give that a try. Can I perhaps incorporate that into my own fighting technique? So I love that element as well. And great, great villains, great heroes, great storylines, great drama. Loved it. Loved it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So my favorite show. Um, I have a I have a ton, um, and a lot of you can uh, uh, in the comments send us your favorite TV show because I know it's a big thing that when you talk about things, they're like, "Oh, I remember that show." 
Um, so I'm going to give you my my comical answer and my my real answer. Um, so my real answer <laughs> is, at, growing up as a little kid, I loved watching Thomas the Tank Engine. We had these little trains, and uh, I just loved all the stories. And the guy who wrote it wrote an amazing story. Um, it's a story. It's their stories that teach you things that teach you how to be better humans, how to be better people um, through these ridiculous trains that you watch on TV. Um, so that's my genuine I message is that that show. What was that? We must have been very different Tom at the tank engines. Must have, <laughs> or you must have later versions that were written by other people. <clears throat> was there a moral to it? Maybe there was. <laughs> I just thought he just spun around all day. Well, that, angry green one who looks like a sour green Pringles tin at a sour look in his face. Maybe I should have just turned up the volume. Okay, didn't know that. <laughs> now, now, for comedy's sake, my, my, favorite, my favorite one is Sesame Street. Because they teach you things that you wouldn't learn anywhere else. They teach you things like near and far. So you get right up near this goes on for a solid five minutes and uh i I love how the people like to make the spin that sesame street has helped people who don't speak english learn how to speak english because you watch sesame street and you know that might have worked for a number of people (laughs) but it is the the dumbest show that you will watch uh and uh the funniest part is when they catch themselves realizing that it's a dumb question. Um, that's it's just hilarious. So uh, yeah, go go. That's so <laughs> you got a show called Father Ted. It's about um, three priests. One of them, well, he's not a thief. Um, he is. He just had church money resting in his account. And one of them's a raging alcoholic. Uh, and the other one is just an absolute idiot. Uh, and their housekeeper, Mrs. Doyle. She's a wild one for a cup of tea. Um, and they've been banished to Craggy Island, an island off the coast of Ireland, and it's just the worst place you could possibly imagine. Uh, almost uninhabited, but for a very, very small uh, flock of Catholic congregants. And there's one episode where they go on holidays. Now, this is a Donald Trump duck i absolutely love it because he is just like one of my favorite humans on planet earth right now um after my brother and logan um well there's one episode where he's trying to teach the idiot priest father Dougal about the difference between small and far away so not near and far but small and far so apparently this is a cow he goes <laughs> democrats watching will be like yeah trump is a cow not the analogy i'm going for people it's just small and beside me and he just goes these cows are small. And for those of you who aren't watching the video and just listening to the podcast, I am moving my hand backwards several inches. These cows are far away. <laughs> and it's just like that. But it's not puppets talking to children. It's an adult trying to explain it to an adult. <laughs> and he just doesn't get it. Yeah, okay. Father Ted is back. When you come to Ireland, we'll binge it. <laughs> all right, all right, <laughs> all right. Okay, what I'll is your so new next question? What is your favorite <laughs> and least favorite ice cream flavor? Oh golly, um, my <laughs> is it okay if they're the same answer? Sure. <laughs> I call it cheeky caramel, mm. and a lovely light blue tub, and it's got. Caramel swirls, but it's also got chocolate sweets full of caramel inside it too. Uh, it's got like a pink lid. I think it's called Gelatino or something. I think it's the company. And when I first saw them in 2020, I said, Ugh, what a pale colored cover. That looks like it was put together from like the cardboard you find on the floor of an ice cream factory. And then one day, my sister. She was living with us at the time. Um, she, I think she just bought one. And was like, here, just have a piece of this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was on fire. Um, and I was like, dang, that was much better than I thought it was going to be. So I went to Lidl supermarket, five minutes from my house, um, a day or two later. 
And I just happened to see one and I was thinking, oh, dare I be so bold? <laughs> you know, we were having like, you know, a nine week heat wave, of just pure and adulterated sunshine. Um, you know, the lockdown was going on. This was back when we thought maybe perhaps possibly the government actually are trying to save us and not destroy us for a change. Didn't last long, but I, I'll be honest, for 15 days, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. And by day 16, I began asking questions. And <laughs> I think I was just so happy not to have to go to work <laughs> that I was just like, things are coming up handy. Um, got myself an ice cream and I took a bite. And oh my goodness, I went back several times that month and I just kept eating it. And I think like every two or three times, maybe four times a month since then, <laughs> I've just been a little just looking for those ice creams. Um, so yes, I went there a few days ago and they didn't have one. They had like, I think it's called like fish flavored one. And I was like, nah, it's not the same as cheeky caramel. And then yesterday I was in it and I had to tear myself away from the freezer. I said, I have to behave and take responsibility for my personal health. So it is my favorite because it is just so darn good. And it's my least favorite because it is not particularly cheap and dietarily it's crud. Absolute crap. The likes of which Jesus Christ not hang in a tree so that I could be saved to ingest. <laughs> so it is my favorite and least favorite. <laughs> What about yourself? Well, apparently you haven't re read Ecclesiastes. You probably shouldn't read it now because it's basically enjoy your Rocky Road ice cream. You know, enjoy it. So uh, you're just <laughs> going to enjoy your ice cream and, uh, you know, enjoy life. There's a reason. There's a season for everything. And the season is enjoy, enjoy your ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so so my favorite is mint chocolate chip. I really enjoy uh, that that's come on lately. That has been a new favorite. It used to be chocolate yeah. chip cookie dough, um, which was very good. But uh, mint is the only kind that I currently can get that is not dairy. It is um, oat milk. Um, so my stomach isn't destroyed on the inside when I eat ice cream, because usually it is. Yeah. Um, so I love the mint one. Um, the least favorite is anything that has to do or is cherry forward i don't want cherry like if it's a cherry ice cream it reminds me too much of medicine um growing up we'd always have cherry the cherry syrup that you'd have to drink and it's very very similar to eat the ice cream so i'm not a fan of cherry ice cream um, i want to change my answer once okay. you said cherry i was like jerry <laughs> and then i was like wait hang on that's not ice cream and then i realized what i meant to say was ben and jerry I used to like their cookie dough ice cream, and then they supported BLM and burning your country to the ground. I know in principle, I refuse to buy their products. There you go. There you go. There you go. Peace, bro. Right. Love. One more question yep. for the people. Uh, what is finally going to end the internet forever? Oh, golly. What is end the internet. People just getting a life. Uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I finished work on Friday. Now, I always like to post the lovely photographs in the morning, usually of beautiful places I've, I've visited on holidays or um, touristy things. Um, and then, oh, I've got a list of magnesium white hot memes, and I like posting them. But, you know, finished work on Friday, and I just said to myself, you know what? I'm actually going to do something today. Don't ask me what I did. I forgot what I did on Friday, but I know I did something. Um, Saturday, it was only two days ago. Don't ask me what I did. Couldn't tell you, but I did something. Yesterday, I know it was at church. What happened after that? Couldn't tell you, but I did something. Today, spent the whole day outside meeting up this person, doing that, canvassing, whatnot, hosted friends and family afterwards, um, here for dinner and dessert. And, oh my goodness, I have reached out for my phone so infrequently, and I haven't missed it once. Because so often we convince ourselves, you know, oh, it's FOMO, the fear of missing out, I need my phone, I need the internet, I need to post that me, I need to check that message. But do you? Ask yourself very seriously. 
to what extent do you think people are actually sitting around thinking about you at a given second? Because I'm sorry, people are thinking about you less than you want to be thought of. Um, Because they're too busy living their own lives. And when you have that healthy disassociation, it is very, very good for your mind. It helps you more engaged in the present, whether it's a project you're on, talking to family, meeting up with friends, going for a walk and actually not listening to music in your ear, but listening like to the birds sing, or like, you know, for oncoming traffic. <laughs> um, yeah, all these things are so, so important. So uh, make a decision to live your life. Disengage. Put it down. It'll still be there. It's still a good resource. It's a resource that can be used for mighty amazing things, for God-ordained exploits. But live your life. You don't actually need it as often as you think you do. Yeah. And that's it, Brendan. Yeah. For those who are just in podcast visual, I just made a C with my hands. Um, uh, yeah, I... I, I agree with that. That's a good, that was a good plug. Um, I would maybe go with, I'm going to go with the more um, religious Isn't answer. I? It's going to be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ will end the internet. We won't need the internet in heaven. It'll be gone. It won't be here anymore. We will be with our Savior as we were meant to be. <laughs> Honestly, you know, you know, when people talk about Adolf Hitler blowing his brains out, what's the next thing? 50 plus year old Christians always say, You'll be surprised to see who's in heaven when you get there. I would not be surprised if the internet is. God knows how much we love it down here. I'm sure he has his own version. I would not be surprised if that was a heavenly download in the in the, the heads of human beings who came from heaven. That God has his own. Right. You might super be right. special. Wouldn't surprise me. Who knows? Wouldn't surprise yeah. me. That's it. Yeah. Who love this. People love heaven. All right. Well, um, if you have enjoyed our podcast today, hopefully you have, and you've enjoyed what we've gone. We still have the Bible passage still to go. Um, you can, of course, send us an email from Dublin to Cleveland, uh, gmail.com, to give us your answers to today's questions, um, to ask Brendan some more information on his Irish stories or Irish legends or um, anything of his Irish culture. He loves to talk about that. That's one of his favorite things to do. Um, if you do, don't want to send us an email and that's too formal for you, you can always uh, friend us on Facebook or Instagram. Um, my, I am Bananaman17, and Brendan is Brendan Thomas Merritt, um, where you can white. find his white hot memes like Hollywood Nation fighting online, pol- I- online piracy is make movies so bad no one wants to watch them even for free. One of his white hot memes today, folks. Go on there; you'll you you will love it. Uh, he he collects. He is a uh, a farmer of memes and takes them from where he he uh, where they were before, plants them in his place, and you will enjoy your time if you follow Brenda Thomas Merritt. So go I ahead. Love recently been very anti like the trans agenda and the alphabet people. People are probably starting to, like raise their eyebrows and be like, "What is this biggest problem?" But you know what? I read the mood of the people, and I give the people what they want. <laughs> hey, I, I'm just going to say my favorite one probably of all time you've ever posted was one the other day where it says someone, somewhere someone is showering with a mask on. I just know it. And you're, I think about that. I think about that very often because there is there's very little things that make me more angry than people wearing their mask in their car or in some place where there is no other human being. There, there are very little things that make me angry or trigger that side of me that uh, mm-hmm. just reacts, and uh, and that was one. That was a good one, Brendan. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I think the one which probably got the most advice, especially among Christians, and the gas thing is, I didn't even know this was like a thing at the time. I just thought it was funny. You know the picture of like the the black guy with the dreadlocks and his face kind of like you know, and it's really really grumpy. I didn't know that there was a, I'm not going to say a conspiracy, could very well be true, a belief out there um, that Michelle Obama is a Michael, that it's a man in drag. I didn't know that was actually something people thought. I thought I was the only one who thought it. And then I realized it's a thing. And then I realized there are like no photographs of her pregnant and where the kids come from and all this kind of thing. 
So I was like, oh my goodness, like this is just hilarious. So <laughs> so I think in like 2020 or 2021, I posted a meme of like, you know, the, the, the ugly guy. But it says something like, the lockdown has been hard on all of us. Just ask Michelle Obama. <laughs> and I thought, you know, it, it was one of those funny ways of saying, Astra, look, you know, people just look, look, look a bit stressed and tired. I didn't actually know that it meant that, <laughs> that she was a man. If she even is a she. But... Oh my goodness, the backlash it got. Comments on comments, 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 abuse, 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 even from the body of Christ. <laughs> and I was just sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, like, do all these Christians actually like the Obamas? <laughs> I was like, didn't they like routinely blow up like weddings and just like kill people and tell how much they hate their country? Um, so that one, oh wow, that was probably Maybe one of my earliest really edgy ones that got a total backlash. I probably lost so many followers. And do I show any sign that I care? Nada. Keep posting. Haters gonna hate. But history is not gonna look back on me as someone who cowed to the government before the Great Revival. My kids and grandkids are gonna look at their daddy's social media someday and say he was a magnesium white in more ways than one, hot meme lord when the world was on the cusp of the apocalypse. There you go. There you go. Go to Mike. I'm very happy about that. (laughs) One of these days, we'll have to do another meme battle or meme war or even a meme review where we just go through Brendan's memes or some other kind of memes. It'll be a class time. But anyway, let's get into (laughs) <laughs> Let's get into God's word today. So we are going to be in Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Uh, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, and he will heal us. He has wounded us, and he will bind up our wounds. He will revive us after two days, and on the third day he will rise us up, so we can live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearance is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring showers that water the land. So I will start, and then I'll turn it over to Brendan to close us out. Um, but some really cool imagery here. You know, the the two days and third day, that's that's a cool thing we know from uh, from jesus rising again um and uh but the the thing that i'll, I'll let brendan focus on that one uh, and i'll what i'll focus on is uh you know god god puts us through some things and we we have to go back to him we have to seek him um striving to know him um he is as sure as the dawn every day he is there every morning the sun rises even though here in uh northwestern um in New York, the sun hasn't been seen for a long time. Um, we know it still rises. Uh, we did get to see it over the weekend. Um, but, you know, as the dawn arises, as a new day starts, he is always there. He is going to be there, and he's going to come to us like rain. He's going to refresh us like spring showers that water the land. He refreshes us and renews us. Um, and so even though it, sometimes it feels like God's putting us through things that tear us down, that maybe wound us or hurt us, at the end of the day, he's the one who heals those wounds. He binds up our wounds and he helps us through those things. So every single thing that we, we go through or a situation that we are put in, he is the one who is the one who can heal us and repair us. Um, the thing that, that uh, God, even in Hosea, talks about that he gets frustrated with is Israel is going to everywhere else to find healing for their wounds, to find um, restitution and all that stuff. And God's like, come to me. I'm the one. Come to me. I will fix it. I will make it better. I will care for you. Um, so even though we go through a world where we can be alone, we can feel by ourselves, we can feel you know, that nobody cares for us or nobody's there for us, people are there for us. Our believers and, and brothers and sisters are, should, should be there for us. And even if they're not, though, God is. God is always there for us. He is there every morning. He is a presence that we can go to and we can return to him even though we walk away from him. Brendan was sharing a story about a coworker who had walked away, but because of where he's been and his situation, he was able to be a part and help them and bring help them come back to Christ. Um, I've had plenty of times where 
I've had campers or I've had people who have God has placed in my life that I have had the opportunity to speak into their life and they are living more for him than they ever were before. And those, that doesn't go back to me or Brendan. Brendan and I don't get credit for that. We will get some, we, no, might, get some reward. we might get some rewards in heaven. We might get uh, a pat on the back. Well done, good and faithful servant, but it's God working through us. Um, and so uh, that is, that is what we want to put out that uh, God works through those who love him and return to him. So Brendan, I'll let you take away with the rest of the time, uh, whatever you'd like to add. Sure. Two things. I snorted when you first mentioned a colleague, cause I thought I was going to share the story with a colleague who sent an angry text. <laughs> <laughs> Lads, the thing you actually missed out on before we hit play, I'm telling you, gold. Someday we just have to actually record the, the pre-show chats cause yeah. they just gold. Yeah. Um, and when you, yeah, it's for the teaching. <laughs> Logan's trying to be all like holy and pastoral just cause like, you know, we hit record. He gave me a promo that teach beforehand and it was like 10 times funnier. And you referred to like, these are like looking for help from everyone else. It's like, they're not going to help you. They're not going to help you. So yeah, your, your, your promo was, was gold. We did about more in future. <laughs> People need to know the word of God can be fun. Um, sure, yeah. So I suppose looking at the the two days, three days thing. Uh, is a thing? It's the word of God. I'll read it that line. Um, <laughs> what does it say? Yeah, after two days, he will revive us, and the third, he will restore us. Um, prophetically, um, Second Peter three eight says that to God in heaven. 1,000 earth years is the equivalent of a day. And in the story of the Great Samaritan, we're told that there was a, a guy who was a beaten bloody, um, Adam and every human being since. Religion jumped over him. Wanted nothing to do with him. Tradition was just going to leave him there to die. And then a Samaritan came along on a, on a donkey. A Samaritan was a man whose mother was a Jewess and whose father wasn't. <coughs> Jesus. <laughs> the Samaritan picks him up on the donkey, same one he went into Jerusalem with, before, you know, with that ordeal with the cloaks and the palm branches, and drops him off at the house of the innkeeper, Holy Spirit. And he pays him two denarii, two days' wages, and says, listen, if I'm a little bit delayed coming back, I'll pay in full. That was Jesus saying that he was going to come, pick up the bloodied man, get his clothes all dirty. That's the cross. That's Calvary. But in two days, I'll be back. You're in the company of Holy Spirit. He'll look after you. In two days, I'll be back. Second Peter 3, 8. Two days, 2,000 years. So what God's saying here is there's a 2,000-ish year period where Holy Spirit is down here with us, looking after us. He's the comforter. He's the teacher. He impresses things in our hearts. We communicate with God through him. Put your faith in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and instantly he brings your dead spirit to life. He sanctifies you, makes you new every day. But there is a time coming when Jesus is coming back, and it begins with snatching us up. So we don't have to live through the apocalypse. Then you got the great, great tribulation. And then Jesus comes back and actually delivers Israel once and for all. Because so often, when we go to Revelation, people focus on the bad. But yes, the enemy will try to destroy Israel. He's trying right now. But a day will come when this will be true of Israel. On the third day, he will restore Israel. That Israel may live in his presence. Let Israel acknowledge the Lord. Let Israel press on to acknowledge him. As surely the sun rises, he will appear. He said it would happen. Not a comma or a dot of punctuation will fail to go to pass. He will come to Israel like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. I know right now people have all kinds of opinions of Israel and Gaza and Hamas. Israel is forever. It is the country that Jesus is coming to rule and reign in. He absolutely loves it to bits. 
And as Christians, let's continue to pray for a manifestation in our time of those reigns of that restoration. But knowing deep down that no matter how bad the world gets, the story's already been finished in heaven. And it finishes with Jesus winning. He has the victory. And you, in the meantime, are more than a conqueror. Amen. So, uh, where's your soul? A little bit of prophecy and end times revelation for you there. <laughs> what else is we have on Monday? It's 29 past midnight. <laughs> You said chapter six, and all I could think of is I have to be up in five and a half hours. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for listening. Thank you, Brendan, for your time. Uh, hopefully, you have enjoyed our podcast today. Um, again, right. leave us a like wherever you you uh, listen to it, and send us an email if you so desire. Follow us on all the places we can follow, and uh, we will see you next time. So, have a lovely day, um, and we'll see you all. Bye, friends. I'm not.